So we, we have seen examples when we're do doing multiple integration, and we're, today we're just going to talk about double integrals. We could, you can make a, the same, same kind of arguments for triple integrals, um, but we're just going to talk about double integrals. Where we, we've seen an example where the, our region in the rectangular coordinates, for example, is difficult. And if we could move to polar <laughs> coordinates, as an example, uh, inter integration becomes much easier. We're going to talk about that kind of idea in a more general sense. How do we change variables in general, not just with polar coordinates or some other familiar coordinate system. So let's remember in single variable calculus. Um, we did u sub, or we do u sub, to integrate. So we have the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And we let x be some function of some other variable, u. That's why we call it u sub. And we say then dx is g prime of u du. And I could write this as or dx, I'm just going to use a, a expand the notation here, uh, equals dg du du. So just writing g prime is dg du. And then our integral, when we make our substitution, integral from a to b of f of x dx, becomes the integral from c to d of f of g of u dg du du and a is uh, g of c and b is g of d so we we don't often we'll, we'll transform back before we do before we evaluate but we could also transform our limits of integration here well this quantity we can think of this quantity dg du as kind of a conversion factor. We're and we're converting from the x and y coordinates to u and g of u coordinates. And this this derivative is our conversion factor between those two to keep everything equal. Well for double integrals we can make a similar substitution. We have the double integral over some region of f of x, y, dA. And we change the variables. So we're going to let x equal some function of two new variables, u and v, and y, some other function of those two new variables, u and v. And an example that we might be familiar with, or we should be familiar with, is x is some function of r and theta, and y is some function of r and theta. So it's the exact same idea. And our integral becomes, So our double integral over our region in the xy plane of f of xy dA becomes an integral over a new region s in the uv plane. And our function now is a function of u and v. And then we're going to have this conversion factor partial of x with respect to u times a partial of y with respect to v minus partial of y with respect to u partial of x with respect to v and then our new variables are du dv. And this quantity, this absolute value of these partial derivatives here, is called the Jacobian.
And we can think of that as our conversion factor from the xy plane to the uv plane. And s is our new region after we change our variables. So just like when we, when we do our double integrals in polar coordinates, we write our limits of integration in terms of our, our, our region in polar coordinates. And when we use po uh, polar coordinates, our conversion factor is r. We get r dr d theta. So if we did this process with polar coordinates, our, our conversion factor, that Jacobian, would turn out to be r. If we did this in, with a triple integral, in spherical coordinates, this conversion factor would turn out to be that quantity rho squared sine phi. So that's our, our conversion factor from rectangular coordinates to uh, spherical coordinates. All right, so this quantity is the Jacobian. I'm gonna go into a little more detail with that. Are we good so far? It's the exact same idea as u sub. We just, the, our, our little conversion is a little more complicated. <coughs> so this factor this partial, these partial derivatives This is the Jacobian. And we say it's the Jacobian of x and y with respect to u and v. And usually you'll see it written as we do this kind of shorthand, dxy, duv. And this, does this, this, this quantity, this thing look familiar at all? We can write this as a determinant. So that's gonna be the determinant of this matrix, dx du, dx dv dy du, dy dv. <coughs> you may also see uh, very common j sub t of u and v, Jacobian transform, or just j of u and v. Both of these are pretty common for the Jacobian. And this, this matrix of partial derivatives shows up in a lot of different contexts. Um, if, if we were to study multivariable uh, Taylor series, this matrix of partial derivatives shows up in multivariable Taylor series, for example. And we think of this as a transformation from the xy plane to the uv plane. So what I want to do is do some, uh, a couple, just calculating Jacobians, <coughs> and then we'll we'll talk about how we use them to transform uh, an integral, a double integral, and and then I'll give a kind of a sketch, a motivation for why the Jacobian takes the form it does. All right, are we good so far? So these first, this first couple, I just want to calculate a Jacobian. So we're just going to find the Jacobian. And we're given a change of variables. X equals minus 1 half U minus V and y equals one half 
u plus v. So we're just going to calculate. We, we have some, um, for example, we have some multiple double integral. And they tell us, use this change of variables. We'll talk in just a minute about why we would choose a particular change of variables based on the situation. So our Jacobian, I'm just going to write our different notations. And that's, we can calculate it as a determinant. Uh, this, this, yeah, this is a Y. All right, so dx du, what, what is that? We just have to calculate these partial derivatives. Minus one half. Uh, dx dv, positive one half. Uh, dy du, one half, and dy dv is one half. We calculate that determinant, and I get negative one half. And so, when we, if we substituted this in an integral, we would use the factor, absolute value of negative one half, in the integral. And we use the absolute value because we're thinking of this as a as an area. We're converting areas, so we want our areas to be positive. Yeah, so this would be one half. So we just, we, if we made this change of variables, we'd have a, a kind of a conversion factor in our variable in our double integral of one half. All right, questions there. Let's look at a little more difficult transformation, and then we'll talk about um, regions and why our transformations look the way they do. So we're given this change of variables. This is a little, little more complicated change of variables. x e to the u sine v, y is e to the u cosine v. So we'll calculate our Jacobian. The Jacobian x, y with respect to u and v is just going to be our, our determinant of partial derivatives. Uh, partial of x with respect to u, e u sine v. Partial of x with respect to v, e u cosine v. Partial of y with respect to u, e to the u cosine v and partial of y with respect to v is going to be minus e to the u sine v. And I calculate that determinant and my this comes out to be minus e to the 2u. So we would include the factor the absolute value of minus e to the 2u in the integral. So we'd have that additional factor in our integral when we evaluated our in integral with respect to u and v. So just like in polar coordinates, we have a factor of r. Here we have a factor of minus e to the 2u. <coughs> All right, so questions on the mechanics of calculating a Jacobian? Just, yes? And then you just put that in your double integral and right. use du, dv instead of dx, dy. Right. And we'll do, we'll do so that as a substitution in just a second. Here we're just calculating the, the Jacobian. All right, so let's look at a region this time. So let's say we're given, and for this, this time we'll look at why we've chosen this transformation x equals one-third 4u minus v and y equals one-third u minus v 
and this region and our region is going to be a picture here one vertex of our region is going to be at zero zero and this is not not to scale one vertex is at four one One vertex is at 6.3, and one vertex is at 2.2. Two. So there's our region in the XY plane. So if we were to evaluate a double integral, we'll make that point really big so they intersect there. Um, if we wanted to evaluate a double integral over this region, this is our region R. We'd have to split it up. We'd have to find, uh, we'd have to split up this, this piece, make another integral here, so we'd have to split it up into three integrals. Not it's super difficult, but if we could simplify this a little bit, it would be nice. And if we have a more complicated region, sometimes splitting up the, the region of integration is more difficult. All right, so this is our region. We want to sketch the region. In the UV plane. So what I need to do here is from the transformations, I need to solve for U and V in terms of x and y. And then I can either find the equations of the boundaries of the region or substitute in the, the x and y coordinates of the, the vertices of my region and plot those in the UV plane to find my region in the UV plane. So we end up with a, a system of equations here. So from the transformations, we get, I'm going to use this one, I get 3x equals 4u minus v. And I'm going to solve this for v. So v equals 4u minus 3x. Let me make this 4 and there's 4 and this is e. There we go. And I'm going to substitute that now into this. So y equals 1 third and this is just the way that I chose to do this. There are other ways that you could go about this. 4u minus 3x. And I solve this, and I get that u, is that a minus or a <coughs> this is a minus. I'm substituting this into this. Or sorry, this. <coughs> uh, no, this. <coughs> I'm substituting this value of v into this equation for y. And this gives me that u equals x minus y when I simplify this. So that gives me u in terms of x and y. And then <coughs> I can substitute in here, substitute this quantity in here, v equals 4x minus y minus 3x. And that tells me that v equals uh, x minus 4y. Let's take a look at why this came out this way. 
if I found the equation of this line or this segment, I could write the equation of this segment. I could find the slope. I've got some points. I could write this equation as x minus 4y equals negative 6. And if I write the equation of this line and rearrange it a little bit, I get x minus 4y equals 0. x minus 4y is going from negative 6 to 0. If I found the equation of this segment, I could write it as x minus y equals 3. And if I found the equation of this segment, I would get x minus y equals 0. x minus y, u, goes from 0 to 3. So what this transformation does, this is why you would pick this transformation, u is x minus y and v is x minus 4y, because those quantities are constant on the boundaries of our region. x minus 4y from negative 6 to 0, x minus y from 0 to 3. So that's why they pick this, and then you rearrange that, and you get this for x and y in terms of u and v. <coughs> so in the uv plane, This one is pretty nice because what we've done is transform a parallelogram to a rectangle. So if this is my UV plane, there's U and there's V. U goes from 0 to 3. And V goes from negative 6 to V equals 0. So we get this as our region. I'm going to highlight the boundaries of our region. So we transform a parallelogram to a rectangle integral in for this region would be much easier to evaluate than the three double integrals for the other region. Set up one integral, I would calculate my Jacobian for my conversion factor, and then I would just go from u equals 0 to 3, v equals negative 6 to 0. <coughs> now the other way that I could think about this is I can plug in x and y for my um, my vertices into these two equations and come up with the vertices of my region. So I can, I can do it either way. I can look at the equations, the, the transformations give us, or I can plug in x and y for the vertices and get the u and v vertices of my new region. It turns out that this point is at, well, we know this point is at 3, negative 6. So we can find the vertices of our region. And that would be useful if sometimes a Jacobian or our transformation is going to transform a, a triangle into an easier triangle. All right, questions? All right, let's go through. Um, the process now, well, let, I'm going to talk about a motivation, the motivation for the Jacobian, why it looks like it does, and then we're going to go through a whole process of where we evaluate a double integral by using the transformation, finding our Jacobian, transforming our coordinates, and evaluating our integral in the, in the new coordinate system. All right, we're good. So our motivation. The reason that the Jacobian looks the way it does is what we're doing is we're taking a 
rectangle in the UV plane. And our transformation, we're kind of thinking of going kind of the other direction. So if we have a rectangle in the UV plane, that's my region, S. In the XY plane, this is going to be some kind of other shape. So I'm going to say it looks something like this. Our transformation does take some, some odd shape in the xy plane into the uv plane. And this is our region in the xy plane. What we do here, this is very similar to the argument we used when we came up with our integral for the surface area. What I'm going to do is construct two vectors on the corner of this region, corners of that region. And I'm going to call this vector T2 and this vector T1. And we construct these vectors very much like we constructed the vectors for <coughs> our surface area. This is going to be a partial derivative um, in, the, in the U direction times delta U plus a partial derivative in the V direction of delta V. So we, we Find, those, find, find representations of those vectors at the corner of that region. And then we say if the region is small enough, the area of our region is approximately the absolute value of T1 cross T2. So we make the, the parallelogram in the UV plane small enough, the area in the XY plane of that region is going to be approximately the cross product of those two vectors that are at the corner of the region. And because it's a cross product and we construct these, we construct these vectors using the partial derivatives in the X direction and the Y direction in the U direction the V direction, that's why it takes that form with all those partial derivatives and that kind of determinant form. So that is, that's why the Jacobian looks the way it does. Because we construct, that, we construct that, that region, or we find the area of that region with these vectors by taking the cross product of those two vectors. <coughs> <coughs> so it's very similar to our argument for a surface area. All right, let's look at a, a problem where we go through the entire process. All right, we're going to use the change of variables to evaluate double integral over a region of 60 xy dA. And I'm going to say that x is 1 half u plus v and y is minus 1 half u minus v and here is our region. There's one zero there's 0, 1. There's 1, 2. And here is 2, 1. So there's our region in the xy plane. It's not drawn perfect, but it's eh, relatively close. There's our region. So this one wouldn't be terrible to evaluate the way that we already know how. 
we'd split it into two, two double integrals. <coughs> so it wouldn't be, wouldn't be too bad. So to come up with our new region, we need to get our, our new region in the UV plane. So we're going to solve for, um, solve for U and V in terms of X and Y. So I'm going to write this system as 2x equals u plus v and minus 2y equals uh, u minus v. I can add these two. I add these two equations together and I get that u equals x minus y. And I subtract subtract one from the other, and I get that v equals x plus y. <coughs> well, let's take a look at why this is our this is our our transformation, our change of variables. If I find the equation of this segment. I get x plus y equals 3. If I find the equation of this segment, I get x plus y equals 1. If I find the equation of this segment, I get x minus y equals 1. And I find the equation of that segment, and I get x minus y equals negative 1. That's why we chose this transformation, because these quantities on the boundaries of my region are constant. <coughs> so our new region in the UV plane is just <coughs> a rectangle again, but it's oriented in a nicer way. So in the UV plane, I get, um, There's my, my axes, my U and V axes. V goes from X1 to 3. And U goes from negative 1 to 1. So I get this nice rectangular region. I'll make it in blue. That's my region in the UV plane. Now the other way I could go about looking at the region, finding the region, um, is I could plug in x and y into my coordinates or into my conversions, into my transformations, to get the, um, the equations of the vertices of the new region. So that's another way that I could go about it. But this is nice because our, our, we just get vertical and horizontal lines in the UV plane. So there's our new region. So our integral is going to go from negative 1 to 1 in terms of u and from 1 to 3 in terms of v. Now we need to find our Jacobian. So we need our conversion factor. So our conversion factor, our Jacobian, so 
we have to find our new region, and we have to find our new our, our conversion factor. Dx, du. So there's x. Dx du is one half. Dx, sorry, dy du is one half. dy dv is negative one half. Sorry, dy du is negative one half, and dy dv is one half. So my Jacobian turns out to be one fourth. And now I just have to substitute everything into my integral and evaluate it. So my integral of 60 x, y, dA is going to be the integral from 1 to 3, the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 60. x is 1 half u plus v. y is negative 1 half. u minus v times my Jacobian du dv. So I make my, my substitutions, and that's going to be my integral. When I simplify this, I get the integral from 1 to 3, negative 1 to 1 of, and I'm going to pull out a constant negative 15 halves uh, u squared minus v squared. du dv. Easy integral to evaluate in terms of u and v. And when I evaluate this, I get 120. So we can see that Jacobians, problems that involve Jacobians, a uh, fair, fair amount of work, even for a simple transformation. Um, you'll notice that the homework is relatively short. On the chapter 14 test, the there will be a Jacobian problem on the take home portion. The Jacobians will not be on the in class portion because it takes a lot of, a lot of work to do the Jacobians. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. So let me let me let me to take a look, uh, show you a couple of, of instances. We're not going to do calculations, more calculations, but a couple of instances, uh, a why or how you might um, need to find a transformation to evaluate an integral. So. You might need to do it if the region is complicated. So let's say, for example, you are given a region in the xy plane that's bounded by, uh, bounded by these graphs. xy equals 1 and xy equals 3. And this is um, y equals e to the x plus 3. And this is y equals e to the x minus 3. And this is your region. So this region much more complicated to find your points. You have to find your points of intersection. That's probably, you're going to probably get an approximation. Um, and you're going to have to divide that region into this one into three double integrals. And your boundaries of your region are going to be these, these functions, x, y equals 1, x, y equals 3, y equals e to the x plus 3, y equals e to the x minus 3. 
But based on this, what would you <coughs> guess that you're going to let your transformation be? U equals xy, because xy goes from 1 to 3. And v, you could do it either way, e in either order. V is, what would, I, what would I let v be? y minus e to the x. Because then y minus e to the x goes from negative 3 to 3. So this transformation would take this really messy region and turn it into a rectangle. So that just makes everything a rectangle? Not necessarily a rectangle. What else can it make? A triangle. Make trapezoids. Yeah. Um, not necessarily. <coughs> um, like in polar coordinates. Oh, but in, we, in rectangular coordinates, if we were to do this, it will always make a polygon. Um, I don't know, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Now, this one would be a little more difficult because our Jacobian would be, um, there, there'd be more to the Jacobian when we found our Jacobian. But we'd have a nice region. Another example is if we had the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 1 minus x, uh, square root of x plus y, y minus 2x squared dy dx. This one, the region is easy. Because what, what, is this, what is this region? y goes from 0 to 1 minus x. x goes from 0 to 1. That's a triangle. So a region in the xy plane just looks like this. That's x plus y equals 1. There's our region in the, in the xy plane. That's an easy region. But the integrand is complicated. So what would you guess you would make a, what would you use as a substitution here? I would say you could say u is x plus y and v is y minus 2x. Make that substitution. That makes the integrand easier. And this integral would actually then be doable. Right, it's just like doing u sub, but you're doing two variables. You're substitu substituting two variables for your x's and y's. <coughs> What's that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and we, when we do it, we call it just converting to polar coordinates, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you'd, you'd find this, the region, this region in the UV plane after you did your transformation. But this transformation, I, mean, I don't think this problem would necessarily be easy. But it would be easier after this transformation than it, than it is here. This would be a difficult integral to evaluate. But it would create a whole other problem with your features that did that. That's possible. But this one, uh, x plus y, uh, u goes from so one, one boundary of your region is nice in terms of u. So I think you'd get a different triangle with this transformation. Yeah. But the integral would be doable. This is not one of those things where it's like either the region is easy or the integral. No. You can make it so they're both relatively easy. Right. Re relatively easier. Better than they were. Right. Better than they were. All right, questions? Okay. <clears throat>